Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. I'm going to show you how to plant these tomato plants today. Basic planting hole, basic setup. I've done that before. But this video is really important to me because I wanted to make starting tomato plants accessible to everybody. So these were grown without grow lights. And you can go back and watch the video on this, but I'm going to explain it real quick and then we'll get to planting these up. And if you want to subscribe and follow me, I'll show you how I take care of these plants. So first thing, today is May 27th. The plants right here, the tomato plants, were started on May 27th, I'm sorry, on March 27th. The plants over here were started on April 10th. These guys look a little bit better because he's got a little beat up, but they're going to be okay. These are done without grow lights, basically dropping the seeds and seed starting mix in either your standard trays, just like that, or you can use a uh, foil baking tray and you can put your tomato seeds right in there. These would just go outside during the day when it was above freezing and they would come in at night when it, the frost would come or the temperatures would drop you know into the 30s beautiful transplants there's over 70 plants right here at three dollars a transplant that's 210 dollars it's real easy to start seeds save yourself money you don't need fancy grow lights and then you can save the extra seeds in the tomato packs and use them for really three four or five years so the transplants look good we're going to get them into a planting hole feed them, take care of them. The way that you keep track of this is right in the left corner, it says uh, March 27th, number seven, March 27th, I'm sorry, number one, and that's just a way for me to line up this sheet of paper to the foil tray, and then it's gonna be hard for you to read, but this is basically the plants that I planted. Same thing over here, I just break this into a grid of one, two, three, four, five, six cells times two, so that's 12 cells and I just write in what I planted. So it's real easy for me to figure out what is there without having to put all kinds of markers in there. Again, it's really important to me that I make gardening cost effective and um, accessible to people. You don't need fancy lights. You don't need a fancy system. system. You can just grow your transplants like this. All right, let's get into the garden, plant these guys up. These are tomato plants that I got in about three weeks ago. They're doing really well. They're, you know, pretty big. Some tomatoes are starting to form. I'm actually doing a series on this group of tomatoes right here. But even though these went in three weeks ago, the plants that I'm going to plant today will get large. They'll catch up to these pretty quickly and it's going to be hard to tell the difference come the beginning of July. So you're not late in getting your tomato plants into the ground and you just don't have to rush them out. That's what this video is all about is you can take your time you don't need fancy grow lights you can just start them as I talked but about end of May warm soil warm temperatures the tomato plants that we're going to put in now are going to take off and really grow large quickly some of the tomatoes are going to go right into this bed if you have weeds growing in your beds and they look this good you have plenty of nutrients in here now these beds were fixed up uh, towards the end of the fall beginning of winter so I know that they're pretty good I'm still going to show you how to prepare a planting hole the key is, is you don't have to overthink it you don't have to do everything you see on YouTube to grow tomato plants they're going to want to grow the whole key is getting them into the ground when the ground is about 60 degrees or warmer and the days are staying in the upper 60s um, upper 70s low 80s and summer's on its way the tomato plants just love those temps and they will really accelerate you're going to need some basic organic granular fertilizer i just buy whatever's on sale sale and throw it into the bucket you just need nitrogen phosphorus and potassium represented that's a bag of all purpose that's fine and you're just looking for the numbers on the bag you're going to see like a 432 533 64 Two. It doesn't matter what those numbers are. They represent nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. That's all you really need. If you want to add something into it, you can add in worm castings. You don't have to spend that money. It does help, I think, get the plants off to a great start, and I find that it does help the growth of the plant. However, if you don't add in everything that I talk about, you still get a good plant. You can get a better plant, but you don't have to spend the money on extra things if you don't want to. So I'm going to clear this out. Three plants are going to go right into here. Three plants are going to go into here, and then three plants are going to go in over there. You're going to need a stake. These are all indeterminate type tomatoes, and they're going to grow at least six feet tall, 
and they will continue to grow until frost or disease takes them. But I'm going to take care of them. So I always just use metal T posts. They're about three or four dollars, but they're going to last longer than you. I mean, they're going to last a long time. I just keep them in the ground. All right, let me set this up and we'll get to planting. All right, so this space is cleared out. At the end of the video, I'll talk to you about what an organic granular or slow release fertilizer is and what a water soluble fertilizer is. So, like I was saying, the soil in here is set up pretty well. And if you're just getting started, you're gonna probably have to add a little more uh, in a way of amendments. I'll talk about those. But after you've you know, been gardening three or four years, if you have compost, you're adding it in, you don't have to spend a lot of money on new products each year to kind of, you know, amend your bed. You can just kind of go with what's already in there. So this is compost. This is compost that I make. That's what I recommend, but I understand that not everybody can make compost right away. If you're going to buy it in a bag, you have to make sure that it's fully composted material, that it's not in the process of breaking down. If you, you know, get something that's cheap and it's not a good compost, it's going to challenge your plant for nutrients. So if it's a bag product, you have to know that it's quality compost. If you don't know, or you can't make it, I recommend just plain old peat moss. This is actually pro mix. It's mostly peat and cocoa core. This is organic matter that doesn't give a lot to the soil life or nutrition to your plant, but it really loosens up heavier soil or it helps out clay soil. And it's just nice to add into the planting hole. So. I would go with, if I have compost, two handfuls of compost. If I don't, two handfuls of peat moss. You don't have to over worry about it. You could do kind of a mix of both. We'll add that in, add that in, in a second. So the plants here are really cherry tomatoes. They're gonna to go in a different place. These are my larger tomatoes and that's what I have these stakes set up for. So I'm going to use my list and I'm going to put in a mortgage lifter and it actually grew into the seed cell right next to it. It's kind of thin, that's okay. I'm gonna pinch off any damaged leaves, I'm gonna remove that. This plant in seven days is gonna double, maybe triple in size. If you wanna subscribe and follow, I'll be showing the progress of the plants here in my Friday morning rambling series and doing a couple videos just on these. This is all you need for a transplant. And that's kind of my point to this video is that you don't need anything fancy grow something like this and it's going to be okay. So planting hole, digging this, I don't know, six, 10 inches. I mean, it's this deep. Actually, that's probably six to eight inches. The planting hole, my clay, I mean, my soil is a little bit heavy, but it looks pretty good. This is on its third year, I think, over here. So into that hole, I'm going to add two tablespoons of any organic granular fertilizer. This granular type is slow release. It's slowly going to break down over the months and feed back to your plant. You never want to sit your plant right on top of any kind of fertilizer. So mix it in, loosen up the bottom of the hole, make it easy for the roots to get to it. That's what I would throw in now. Handful of compost. You didn't have compost, peat moss, combination of both. You don't need to over worry about it. Mix everything together. That's a beautiful planting hole. We're going to plant this plant, maybe a third of it, right up to here. This is a vine. Wherever the vine contacts the soil, roots come out. So we're gonna plant it just like that. A Little bit deeper. Fill in any heavier soil that you have. Just break it up. And this mortgage lifter is ready to go. We'll water this in with a water-soluble fertilizer in a second. I'll talk about that. Make sure you label right now. Um, I will do that. You're going to remember what you put in here right now, but when you get to nine plants and a week goes by, you're not going to remember what you're growing. So let me plant up everything in this space, label it. We'll come back and water it in with a water-soluble fertilizer, and that's all you really need to do. This tomato plant is going to do wonderful. And we started it ourselves. We didn't spend more money on it than we needed to at like three or four dollars a transplant. We, we just spent our money on seeds, some seed starting mix, and a container, and we can use those year after year. 
So I wanted to show you how to use the worm castings. I'm affiliated with Vermisterra. I will put that information in the video description. I just take a handful, sprinkle it right into the hole. That's the best way to really use worm castings. They can be a little bit expensive, but just target them to the planting hole. Now you don't have to use castings or you don't have to use other fancier things. Compost, peat moss, any organic granular fertilizer. And in fact, I just did a reel on Instagram if you want to find the rusted garden there. And it talked about when you walk into a place like Home Depot and you'll see water soluble fertilizer that will say for edibles, for raised beds, for blooms, for fruit trees. It just gets crazy. You don't need to worry about the labeling on any of those fertilizers. You just want to make sure that N, P, and K is represented in some way. Whatever's the cheapest, use that. Once you drop in the castings, the organic granular, granular was already thrown in there. So was the compost. You just mix it in and that's all you really need to do. I have nine plants planted. Just repeat the basic planting hole and you can vary from that, but that's the minimum that you need. You really don't need to add more, you can. I've got the homestead in, the mortgage lifter, brandywine pink over here. I have Mountain Gold, a Brandywine Red, and that is a Cherokee Purple. This is a sunflower that seeded itself. It's going to stay, and that is a green bean back there. You don't have to get over fancy with this. Let me show you why I'm here. What else you can do? You can take your organic granular, just scatter some across the surface. Later on, I'll put down about an inch of mulch. So we have the organic granular, slow release, breakdown over the weeks, feed over the months. This is my water soluble fertilizer, which means, and I've said in plenty of other videos, but maybe this is the first time you're watching um, my videos, it's immediately available. It's a, not really a fast relief, uh, re release, it's a fast acting, which means when I pour it on the leaves, the leaves will be able to pull in some nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, but more importantly, the roots will be able to take it right into its system. Like I said, these tomato plants are going to grow very quickly now that the soil temperatures are in the 60s, the nights are staying in the 60s, and I just give it a good watering of a water soluble. I use fish emulsion, agrothrive, thrive and even the chemical types when I give them that first water soluble feeding. Pretty much stick with organic. Chemical fertilizers every once in a while won't, won't hurt. If these look yellow over the next couple of weeks, hit them again with your water soluble fertilizer. But these are good for another four weeks. They're going to be fine. You've got plenty of feed fertilizer in there. And like I said, in about seven to ten days, these are going to look really, really big because the temperatures are just right. Over here I have Aunt Ruby's German Green and this one seeded itself. So I'm going to keep it there. It was in a perfect space. So we'll see what that's going to turn out to be. If you don't want to start transplants and your growing season's long enough, we're here in Maryland Zone 7, you can just plant seeds. It's that warm soil, warm night temperatures, warm day temperatures that really help tomato plants take off and double and triple in size week to week as you get growing. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this gives you some ideas of how you can start your own transplants, not spend a lot of money, and gives you a little confidence in just setting up a basic planting hole. Again, not spending a lot of money. Please subscribe and follow. I'll show you how these grow over the week. And please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.